Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us on a mystery flight into the Rocky Mountains in his story called Weekend Stopover. Tell me, Mr. Mandarin, is there any truth in the rumor you're going to stop off on your way to see the future Mrs. Mandarin? <coughs> How can I when there is no future Mrs. Mandarin? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. So you're flying direct from here to Denver? Sure, that's where we're booked to appear on Monday night. But it's only Friday afternoon now. Oh, I like to be early. Oh, oh, come on, Mickey. If you're flying straight to Denver, why didn't you take a regular flight? Why book a helicopter with long-range fuel tank? Hey, what do you represent, mister? I want to stand to the Colorado Express. So you'll be watching for my arrival in Denver, right? Right, Mr. Madden. You didn't answer my question. I like helicopters. Could there be any other reason? Yeah, maybe. Like what? Like helicopters are useful for going to small towns with no regular airfield. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it. Pilot signaling flight's ready. If you'll kindly excuse us, I'll be seeing you all in Denver come Monday night. Come on, honey. What are we going to do this That reporter was like a starving dog with a pound of sirloin steak. Yeah, it's only playing guessing games, Rosie. Well, don't be surprised if he ain't waiting there in Graydon when we land. He's got a nose that'd make Pinocchio look sick. Nobody knows we're going to Grayton except you, me, and David. Okay, so I know some long-nosed reporter going to know, eh? You tell me that. The pilot could have blabbed. I mean, he'll have had to lodge flight plans. Even the pilot don't know, Rosie. I'll tell him when our feet are off terra firma. You mean he thinks we're going to Denver? <laughs> he thinks we're going to Denver, honey. My name's Jim Baker. I was the pilot for Mickey Madden's helicopter flight that afternoon. Mickey Madden. Yeah, I'm sure you must have heard of him. Not so long ago, he was topping the charts all over the world. And at the time, he was on a three-month concert tour of the major American cities. He was a self-assured young fellow of 23 and always ready for a laugh. Also touring with him was Rosie Caxton, a country and western singer, and Davy Dalton, a top ballad singer. They were my three passengers. After takeoff, I headed due north for Denver, which should have been a two-hour flight. And that was when Mickey leaned close to me. Uh, say, pilot, uh, I'd be much obliged if you change your flight plan and takes to Grayton instead. Well, that's a bit irregular, sir. All the same, I'd like you to fix it. There's 500 in it for you personally, and I'll pay any extra costs in fuel and time. Grayton. Grayton? Well, that's a small place in the Rockies, isn't it? You got it. Just on the Pack Mule Peak. Well, I mean, there could be problems. What kind of problems? Well, big problems. The weather report for that area is bad. <laughs> it's winter. What do you expect? Well, I'm talking about flying conditions. Ah, uh, look, uh, this is important to me. You're a good pilot, and I'm sure you can do it. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's one hell of a blizzard blowing down the east side of the Rockies, and, well, it's probably hitting Pack Mule Peak right now. I mean, how desperate is it for you to get there, Mr. Madden? <sighs> okay, judge for yourself. You heard the press conference back there before we left. Well, some of it, yeah. All right, so I'm going to let you into a big secret, which I don't want to repeat, okay? I promise. Well, I was born in Grayton. My mother lives there alone, on a small home. Oh, yeah? She refuses to live anywhere else. She won't even take a cent from me. Oh, damn it, I could buy her the biggest ranch in Colorado, but she don't want to know. She was a country girl. That's the way she likes it. Well, the last three years, she's only seen me on television. And do you know why? Tell me. Well, if the press got to know, they'd give her a hard time. Camping on the stoop, asking endless stupid questions about me. And she wouldn't like that, pilot. I wouldn't like it either. So, as far as the world knows, I was born in New York City, which is a big village in the east with ten million faceless people living in it. Now tell me, how can I go and see my mama without the whole world knowing about it? Why, you got a big problem there, Mr. Madden. You're damn right. And you can solve it for me by going to Grayton and never telling a soul about where we went to. Well, I'll do what I can, but somebody's got to know when I call up and change the flight plan. Well, that's okay. You can tell them to keep it confidential, can't you? Okay. You sold me on the idea. I'll call up and then plot a new course. 
But I must warn you, there'll be nothing much to see in Grayton except your poor mother and snow drifts as high as a house. I know. Didn't I tell you I grew up there? Getting bumpy, Dave. Yeah, Mickey said we were running into bad weather. There's a blizzard blowing down Grayton. You didn't warn me about that. I hate snow. Me too. It'll look great when we arrive. Everything white and clean under a blanket of fresh snow. Lucky if you see anything in a blizzard. Ah, it'll blow itself out. Maybe even before you get there. You know how phony these weather reports can be. I still think Davy and me should have gone on ahead to Denver and waited there for you. You'll like it, I tell you. We didn't live in a rickety clinker built shed, you know. The house is nice, modern. You said it was a small hold in. Anything under 10,000 acres is a small hold in that part of the world. Believe me, Rose, you'll like it. All that home cooking, log fire blazing in the hearth, and all the little comfort you can't get in these plastic hotels we live in. Well, I'm a girl who'll try anything once. It's just the bad weather that turns me off. Yeah, and I agree. Look at that lousy sky head. It's almost black. Oh, quit grousing, will you? We're going out for a weekend, away from the crowds and publicity. It's what we need. Every time I need peace and quiet, I go and lock myself in the bathroom. (laughs) Okay, okay. So I made a big mistake in asking you along, but it's only a weekend, not a lifetime. Now just do us a favor and make the best, you know? Hey, what did we hit? A big wall? Hang on tight. We're getting into the thick of it. In fact, it was a bit like hitting a brick wall, as Rosie Caxton had said. High winds buffeted the chopper, and the temperature inside quickly dropped in spite of the heating system operating on maximum. Visibility gradually deteriorated, though we did get a few clear patches. But what troubled me most was that we were getting perilously close to the mountains. I turned and looked at the pale faces of my passengers. The men smiled, putting on a brave front. But Rosie gave vent to her feelings by being sick instead. For myself, I felt uneasy, almost expecting disaster to hit us. All the same, I was unprepared for it when it did. In fact, I was seriously considering turning back when... Hey, something wrong? Yeah, it could be. Dials are reading okay, but something's causing problems. Something is wrong. I- I've got it. I've got it. The blades are icing up. Not going fast like that. I'm going to have to find a place to land. You hear that? You're going to have to land for a spell. I should have known... Ain't that all we need? Freezing to bleeding death and a broken down helicopter in the Rocky Mountains? Well, it ain't gonna be easy getting down. I thought these things come down easy. Well, they do normally, when you can see the ground. And I got no idea where we are within a radius of 30 miles. And I don't want to put us down in the middle of a lake or on the slope of a mountain. Uh Uh-oh, she's getting worse. What are you gonna do? Keep my fingers crossed and try to find a clear patch. But right now, visibility is down to about 50 feet. You got any parachutes in this crate? I wouldn't do you any good. You'd freeze to death before you reach the ground. It's 30 below out there. Oh, man. This is going to be one hell of a weekend. Yeah, if we survive it. I knew we had very little time to find a safe landing place. So I mentally prayed for a patch of reasonable visibility. And after a few minutes, it came. And I saw on my left a steep snow-covered cliff. Through the swirling snow, I could also see a patch of flat ground near its base. Hey, it looks scary out there. Damn cold. I'm going down. I saw a flat stretch right below us. I can't see anything. No, the snow's closed in again. I'll have to go down by guesswork. You just hang on tight in case I'm wrong. I feel like any minute those blades are going to stop. Any minute they will stop. I just hope we reach the ground first. Oh, say, I can see it. The ground. Yeah. Yeah, so can I now. Another few seconds. Easy does it. You made it. That's great. Oh, Oh, boy. That's the hardest bit over. And now all we need is old lady luck on our side. Yeah. Did you cut the engine, or did it stop by itself? Uh, don't worry, I cut it. Just listen to that blizzard out there. Yeah, and that's our next problem. To wrap up as warm as we can. It's going to get pretty cold in a few minutes. Oh, lucky I brought my fur coat. I guessed it was going to be cold, but nothing like this. I got a heavy coat in my case. Here, Davy, yep. reach back and get it out for me, will you? Yeah, okay. I made a bad guess and brought nothing. Well, there's a small closet right at the back there. You'll find ten blankets in it. I guess they'll be enough. 
Yeah, that, that, that's right, Mr. Dalton, in there. Right. Well, what now? Will we just sit here and wait? Well, I'm hoping it blows over in a while. Then I can de-ice the blades and continue the flight. What if it don't blow over? Well, I'm sorry you asked that question, miss. Why? Because the answer is that we either freeze or starve to death. Okay, sorry I asked. Uh, look, uh, can you use your radio? I doubt it. We're surrounded by mountains here. I'll give it a try, though. Sounds noisy. Yeah, like Rosie singing in the bath. Shut your <laughs> face, Davy Dalton. You ain't no canary yourself. Hey, quiet a minute, would you? Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Blue Angel with a mayday. Do you read me? Mayday, mayday, mayday. What's all this about a mayday? Oh, well, it's the universal call for help. Oh. But there's no reply. I'll try again in half an hour. Uh, wouldn't every five minutes be better? No, no, you'd run down the batteries. No. Oh, there's nothing out there. I doubt if anybody would hear us even if they were trying. I can feel cold coming in already. Yeah, well, it's going to get a lot worse. Uh, keep wrapped up and keep the heat in, even if you're feeling a bit warm right now. It took it in around your feet, Miss Caxton. Oh, sure. Uh, but I don't answer much to that name no more. Just call me Rosie, will you? Yeah. We're all going to freeze together. We might as well get on a first-name basis. Well, I'm Davy. Well, I'm Jim. Hey, Davy, about that crack you made about my singing... Quit it, Rosie. We don't need any arguments right now. You can sing. You can sing real fine. Make a living from it, don't you? I just don't like people calling canaries croakers that I long. said quit it. Who are you giving orders to, huh? Since when did they pin a general star on your collar, huh? Tell me that, Mickey Madden. Just cool it, Rosie. I ain't going to argue with you. Just because I'm a supporting act, it don't mean you can treat me like trash. Nobody's treating you like anything. But if you don't shut up, I'll give you a slap. You won't forget in a hurry. Huh. And I'll follow that one up with a second one for good luck. Do you hear that, Jim? Both of them are against me. Oh, I know. They'd like to get me out of the show and get Lulu Stratton in my place. But I won't move, and it'll cost you a hundred thousand bucks to break my contract, Mickey Mattern. Don't think I don't know what's going on behind my back. I got friends. You know something, Rosie? I think you've got a paranoid hang-up. Nobody's trying to get you out of the show. As for Lulu Stratton, she's working out a three-month contract with Grand Old Opry. Couldn't get her if we tried. Cindy good old then. Cindy's in L.A., making a movie. And Martha Davis is touring Europe, so you've got no other competition to replace you. I could have been making a movie instead of taking this lousy concert tour. Yeah, Rosie. We heard about it. Bet part in a B-grade Western that probably won't even make it to the circuits. Now, stop yapping, will you, Rosie? You've got more to worry about than your imagination. If you don't mind me butting in, like, but that's very true. We do have a lot to worry about, more than I thought. Why, what is it? Visibility is getting better, and if you look out there, you'll see a steep cliff. Well, what about it? Well, take a look at the top. You see the way the ice and snow is built up on it? Yeah. Well, there's a few thousand tons waiting to come falling down in an avalanche, and we'll be right in its path. Oh. Looks pretty solid to me. I thought it'd take a few days of thought to do that. Normally, yes, but even a loud noise could shift it. You mean like the engine? Yeah, like the engine and rotor blades. I never thought of that. You know, can it get any worse? First we're going to crash, then freeze to death, or if we don't freeze, we'll starve to death. Now you tell us we're going to get rolled up in an avalanche. You make it so as I'm beginning to choose which would be best. Freezing's best. Oh, so I've heard. You just go to sleep and that's it? Okay, okay, that's enough of that. We're going to fly out of here in one piece. Ain't that right, Jim? If it's humanly possible, yeah. Uh, Davy, back there in the closet you'll find a spray canister and what looks like a scraper. Will you pass them forward to me, please? Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, I reckon the blizzard's begun to blow itself out now. The wind's definitely dropped by 10 or 15 knots while we've been sitting here. Yeah. Well, now's as good a time as any to go outside and clean the rotor blades of ice. You are. Oh, thanks. What's in the canister? Uh, it's a special solution to spray on ice. It turns it to a soft slush in seconds, and I just scrape it away. Want to dice up again? No, not for a long while. And I hope we'll be out of here before then. This here door opens out, was done it? Yeah. 
And I want to let as little of the cold in as possible, so you pull it shut behind me just as fast as you can. Are you ready now? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Careful now, you go. Oh, gee. I wouldn't go out there to save my life. He's going out there to save all our lives. Well, I hope he gets us out of here. Oh, well. Jim knows what he's doing. Well, there's uh, one consolation if we don't. What's that? Why, we'll become immortals like Buddy Holy and Big Hopper. Being outside the helicopter was like being at the center of a swirling ball of freezing cotton wool. The chill wind knifed right through to my skin, and several times I was nearly blown off the top of the cowling. I was tempted to take shortcuts in cleaning the blades just so I could get back to the comparative comfort inside, but that could be fatal, and I carried on until not a trace of ice was left. And then, thankfully, I got back inside. You all right, Jim? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I will be soon. Oh, I, right now, I can't even feel my hands and hey, feet. Get yeah. that bottle of whiskey out of my bag, will you? That'll help. Right. Whiskey. Look in the bottom, and you'll find some Great. glasses. Okay. You'd think I'd come prepared for a situation like this, wouldn't you? Uh, at least bringing the whiskey oh. is one thing you did right. Here we go. Here you are, Jim. Oh, thanks. Oh, boy. I can feel it going all the way down. You're going to pass it around, ain't you, Mickey? Sure, sure. Don't get yourself in a panic. See, Jim, why can't you start the engine and keep it running, huh? Well, that way the heating comes on and the engine will stay warm. Two reasons. The first is that although I've got long-range fuel tanks, I'm going to need most of the gas to get us to Grayton, then on to Denver. A lot of mileage, you know. Yeah. And the second reason? Well, I don't want to risk starting that avalanche we were talking about earlier. You haven't made any more calls for help. Well, no point if we can't be heard. If help came anyway, it'd be the mountain rescue helicopter, and for sure that'd bring the avalanche down on top of us. Oh, oh no. No, I think we've got to get out of this thing ourselves. How far away do you reckon we are from the nearest habitation? I mean, if there's a town or a village, maybe we could try and walk it. Oh, no way. The nearest is Cotton Ridge, I reckon. And that must be in the region of, oh, 40, 50 miles away. And if you must know the truth, we're halfway up a mountain right now. What we're perched on is a wide ledge or plateau. Look over that way. What do you see? Sweet nothing. You know why? Because there is nothing. Probably a sheer drop for a few thousand feet. On our other three sides is cliff. I reckon that if we did decide to walk, there'd be no way down. It's fly out or nothing. We sat for yet another hour and watched as the wind gradually abated. The snow stopped and we were able to clearly see our position, and it was exactly as I'd thought. We were perched on a wide platform or ledge halfway up a mountain. Everything visible was covered in a thick blanket of snow, and huge deep snowdrifts were piled up against the cliff face. It was yet another hour to darkness when I decided we should risk a takeoff. If it gets any colder, my feet are going to fall off. Visibility's good now, and the wind's dropped to about 15 knots. Yeah, I reckon I can make a try at taking off. What about that snow overhang up there? Yeah, sure, there is that. It's been in my mind all along, but so long as the engine starts right away, we could be up and away before it comes rolling down on top of us. Is the risk really that bad? Look, I don't want to fool you, Rosie. It's dicey. The engine's pretty cold, and it might take a few turns before starting. Mind you, it might take a bomb to shift the overhang, in which case we've got nothing to worry about. Okay, so let's get it done with. It's your flight, Mickey. Here we go. Ah. Oh, darn it. A damn thing would get difficult at a time like this. Hey, it's beginning to fall. What? The snow's coming down on us. Take it easy, Davy. It's not much. I suggest you hang on tight in case it gathers momentum. If the engine's broken down and we're stranded up here, I think I'm going to throw a fit of hysteria. Relax. There's nothing wrong with the motor. It's oh. just cold, that's all. The Jim's right. Now sit back and calm yourselves. Oh. Yeah, we nearly had it that time. Look out. It's coming down. Oh. Hang on tight. We were lucky. Only a small part of the overhang had come away. 
It had hurtled down the cliff in a great cloud of loose snow and ice particles, hit the ledge, and rolled towards the helicopter, stopping about ten feet short. Smaller ice particles hammered the fuselage, but the aircraft suffered no damage. For several moments we sat, not daring to move or speak. And then Mickey leaned back in his seat and heaved a great sigh of relief. Whew! I thought we were going to get rolled up that time. We were lucky. There was only a small section of the overhang that broke away. Uh, the next lot that falls is going to swallow us up. Uh, Jim, what now? Well, the choice is simple. Sit here and wait for it to fall, or gamble on the engine starting next time. Oh, what the hell did we ever do to deserve this? We accepted Mickey's invitation. That's what we did. Well, I had a bad feeling about this trip anyhow. Okay, instead of whining about the past, try and think ahead. I don't want to. That's the point. There might be nothing ahead to think about. Go on, Jim. Send it. Hold your breath and say a little prayer, huh? Hurry up! The overhang's coming away. Okay, I'm doing my best. Oh, Jim, you better do better than that. Through my side window, I saw a mountain of snow and ice crash to the foot of the cliff and start roaring towards us. I couldn't get full power on the engine, but she started to lift, very slowly but increasing. Suddenly, all visibility was gone in a massive cloud of loose snow as the avalanche roared past a few feet below us. I kept rising vertically, hoping there was no air current to drive us against the face of the cliff. It all happened in a matter of seconds, I know but it seemed like a lifetime before I came out of the snow cloud and clearly saw the mountain. You made it, Jim. We're safe. Yeah, yeah it really so. was oh. by the skin of our teeth, huh? I thought she wasn't going to get altitude in time. <sighs> yeah, I think it's all go now. <laughs> well, what's it to be, Mickey? You still want me to fly to Creighton? I don't know. I think my guests should have a say in it. Rosie? I'm sorry, Mickey, but I'd give anything for a weekend in Denver. How about you, David? Well, after this, I'll go along with Rosie. I see Okay. Denver Airport it is. I could still drop you at Grayton and then carry on to Denver with the others. No, I reckon we'll all go to Denver. You can be my guest, Jim. Uh, what about your mother? Uh, I'll find a way to drop out of sight later in the year and visit her. You're the boss. Denver it is. When we arrived at Denver, there were a number of journalists waiting to interview Mickey Madden. It appeared that uh, he'd been reported missing, and now our late arrival had aroused public curiosity. Uh, there he is, Paulus. Yeah. Hey, come on, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Madden, tell me, did you stop off and see your fiance? You want me to say yes, don't you? Well, sure, if it's the truth. Well, the answer is no. Oh, oh come who, on, Mickey. Who did you see? Would you believe no one? Well, why else would you break your journey? Well, oh, maybe I can leave that to your imagination. Oh, well, telling the truth could come be on. good publicity for the show, Mickey. I know. Could there be anything going on between you and Miss Caxton? Huh? Only a few arguments now, man. <laughs> right, Rosie? That's <laughs> right, Mickey. That was all right. Come on, give us a break, Mr. Madden. Yeah, Where did you on. go to? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Well, if it makes sense, why not? Okay, I'll level with you. Yeah, give it a try. We was forced down to spend three hours in the blizzard up the side of the mountain. Well, I'd like to believe that. <laughs> then why don't you? There are no mountains on the route, that's why. Well, we took a roundabout route. I wanted to take a look at the Rockies. <laughs> and we nearly got wiped out by an avalanche. Yeah. Oh, oh, come on. Uh, forced down an avalanche in a blizzard? Who are you trying to kid? That sounds corny to me. That's just the reaction I expected from you. Is this some kind of publicity stunt? If that's the way you want to take it. Okay, tell us about it. I guess I've told you enough already. Come on, Rosie. Let's get out over to the hotel. Now, wait a minute. We hey, no, come on. You can't leave us in there. I wish I could hit him with his darn chance. Don't bother, Rosie. They don't only say it was another publicity stunt. Come on, let's go. Well, I know Mickey didn't intend to leave me holding the baby, but he did. As soon as Mickey, Rosie, and Davy had left, it was my turn to be besieged by the reporters. So I told them the truth, exactly as you've just heard it. And you know what? They wouldn't believe me either. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.